Now looking at some more complicated cases. So before, a woman was already given in that standard form. Sometimes we had the option where we had the exact same coefficient on our variables. So we had to multiply using the multipli multiplication principle by a negative one. But oftentimes we need to multiply by something other than that, other than negative one. So in this first case, as we look at that, if I add them together, nothing is eliminated. If I multiply one of them by a negative, still nothing's going to be eliminated. So generally, there's an easiest variable to eliminate in these cases. Sometimes there isn't. But in this case, if I have to alter the equations, which one am I going to want to alter and by what factor? So 5 and 3... LCD or LCM is 15, so I would have to alter both of those to get rid of them. But here, between 2 and 6, my least common multiple is 6. So I only have to alter this one and by a factor of what? Times everything by 3, because I want these to be the exact coefficients but have opposite signs so that when I add it, it's eliminated. So the equivalent system, I didn't change the first but I'm multiplying every single term by 3 in the second equation. So we've got 15x minus 6y is equal to 42. I'm going to do it off on the side. 4 times 3, 12, yeah, 42. Now, when we add those together, what happens? My y's are eliminated. I've got 18x is equal to 36. If I divide by 18, x is equal to 2. So we solved for 1, one of our variables. We also need to solve for y. We can plug it back into any of them. I'm going to plug it into the first. So 2 times 3 will give me 6, plus 6y is equal to negative 6. So many 6's. So if I subtract 6, I'm looking at negative 12, divide y is negative 2. So the solution to this system was the point 2, negative 2. Again, if you weren't convinced that it was correct, plug it back into both, check and make sure it satisfies both at the same time. Okay, so I could have eliminated x. Here, we'll look at those cases a little bit later, but work towards the easiest thing to eliminate. So, two for you to try on the next page. What is going to be the easiest to eliminate in the first case? The a's. And easiest to eliminate in the second case? The y's. So take those, run with them, see what you get. So how did you have to alter this second equation? I need to multiply it by a factor of negative 2 because I need them to be the same coefficient but with opposite signs. So, we didn't change the first. 4a plus 7b is 11 was unaltered, but every single term needs to be multiplied by negative 2 down here. So, negative 4a minus 6b is equal to negative 10. Now, if we add those together, the a's are gone. I've got 1b is equal to... 1. That's nice. We can plug back in to solve for a. I'm going to plug it into the first one. So 4a is equal to 4. If we divide by 4, a is also equal to 1. That's a boring case. Solution set goes through the point 1, 1. If we aren't convinced, plug back in and check. Is 7 and 4 really 11? Is 3 and 2 really 5? Yeah, that one's pretty quick. All right, for the second one, if we're trying to eliminate y, what did you alter? Second one by a factor of what? Positive 4. We didn't have to do negative because they're already opposite signs. In this case, they were the same. In this case, they were already opposites. So, equivalent system. First one didn't change. Second one, every single term by 4. 20x plus 8y is negative 48. So if we add those together, my y's are going to be gone. I've got 23x's is equal to negative 46. Divide by 23. x is equal to negative 2. 
Now that we have one of them, we can plug back in and solve for the other. I'm going to plug it into the first. So negative 6 minus 8y is equal to 2. Negative 8y is equal to positive 8 if we add 6 to both sides. So what does that mean? Y is negative 1. So the solution to this system crosses at one point through minus 2 minus 1. Could graph it. See where the intersection is occurring. See that it happens there. Plug it back into the originals. Make sure that it holds true. Now to get into the more complicated cases. So part of the strategy in using this method is deciding which variable to eliminate. Sometimes there's an easiest route to go, but either way, eliminating either variable will yield the same results. So if you solve for x first, then plug it in and solve for y, you're going to get the same as if you solve for y first, plug it in for x, because we have to satisfy both coordinates, both part of the coordinates at the same time. So we multiply so that the terms involving the variable we want to get rid of are opposites. So the same number, but with opposite signs. So it's helpful to first get each equation in a form equivalent to that standard form, ax plus by equals c. You'll need to know that term. Standard form. Important. So everything that we've dealt with so far has been in the standard form. We've had the x's first, the y's second, the constants on the other side of the equal sign. Sometimes it's not going to be given to you that nice. For example, that first system we're going to look at, these are not in standard form. I have everything on one side, set equal to zero, and it's a mess. So the first thing we want to do is get it into standard form. We need to write an equivalent system. So I need to write my x's first, so it's positive, staying on the same side of the equal sign, so no signs are going to change yet. Same story for y, it's positive. But if I want to move 1 to the other side, it's going to have to be negative over there. So we're in that standard form. These didn't change, they just switched to order. We can commute them. Order doesn't matter, with addition, and subtract one to the other side. So here, 5x is in the spot we want, but we need to add 4y to both sides, keep 7 where it is. So these two systems are equivalent, they just have different forms. They mean the same thing. So as we're looking, um, is there any easiest variable to eliminate? No, the LCD for both, LCM, this common multiple between 2 and 5 is 10, between 3 and 4 is 12. So we would have to alter both equations at the same time. So let's just say I want to get rid of x. So, again, least common multiple between 2 and 5, smallest thing we can work with, is 10. So I need to have opposite signs and still have the same coefficient, just again with opposite signs. So if I multiply that first equation by a factor of negative 5, what do I need to multiply the second line by? So this is going to be negative 10, and I need this to be the opposite of negative 10. So we need to multiply the second one by a factor of 2. So when we do that, we get another equivalent system, because whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So every single term by negative 5. What are we looking at? Negative 10x minus 15y equals positive 5, every single term, and every single term down here by 2. So 10x plus 8y equals 14. So all three of these systems are equivalent, they just take different forms. Now when we add those together, what happens? The x's are going to be gone. How many factors of y do we have? And it's equal to 19 when we add those two together. So in this case, when we do the division to get y on its own, doesn't it simplify nicely? 19 over negative 7. If you don't get a whole number out, that's fine. We're going to have to deal with fractions at some point but they can be a pain. 
So we still need the x coordinate. We have a y. We have so many different options we can plug it into, it's not even funny. I'm going to go with this first one. Generally pick from the original system, just in case you've made some mistakes um, in writing the equivalent systems. Then when you go to check, you'll realize something went wrong. Okay, so I'm going to plug it into this one because x is almost isolated. Hopefully it will require least amount of work. So 5x is 7 minus 4 times what I know y is equivalent to. And again, nothing is going to um, cancel out nice there. So I've got 5x is equal to 7 plus negative times a negative. We'll go straight across the top, 19 times 4, 76. Straight across the bottom, 7. All right. So before we try to divide by 5 and take care of that, let's add these together. What do we need in order to combine fractions? We need common denominators. So my least common denominator between 7 and 1 is 7. So over here we need to multiply by 7 over 7. So 5x is equal to 49 sevenths plus 76 sevenths. So we've got 5x is equal to, how many all together? 125. And we need x on its own. I could divide both sides by 5. But when I do that, over here, I'm dividing a fraction by a number. So how could I kind of get around that? Instead of dividing by 5, I could multiply by what? It's reciprocal. One fifth. Then when it's in that form, same thing divided by the same thing is gone. We can start to simplify and we don't have to deal with big numbers in the end. So how many times can 5 fit into 125? We can do that division first. Nothing else will simplify, so x is 25 sevenths. So solution to the system goes through the point 25 seven. 19, negative 7. Checking of those are going to be a pain when we have a bunch of fractions, but it still will work. Plug in both, check and make sure, or even graph it with a graphing calculator, because this is a not going to be very precise um, if you're doing it by hand, but we can always check. So sometimes we have to alter both equations. And sometimes it's given to us in a form that isn't very nice, and we need to write it in that standard form first.